When Stella Bowles was in grade six, she learned that the beautiful river across the road from her home was actually an open cesspool. More than 600 households were flushing their sewage directly into Nova Scotia's LaHave River. And although that was against the law, nobody was doing anything about it. The authorities weren't even telling people about the problem. So Stella, who was 11, tackled the problem herself. By the time she was done, the three levels of government had committed $15.7 million to rid the river of sewage. And Stella had begun a project to show other kids how to tackle other polluted rivers. And at 13, she was named one of Canada's top 25 environmentalists under 25. I want to talk about, I guess I want to talk about the way that things evolved for you because this has really been an astonishing three or four years. Yeah, so I knew I couldn't swim in the river because mom, she always told me I'd ask if I could swim in the river and she'd say, no, it's dirty, and then just kind of brush it off. But then when our septic system collapsed that my great grandfather installed way before my time, um, that's when mom mentioned straight pipes at the dinner table and how we were told we had three months to fix our collapsed septic, septic system when our neighbors flushed directly into the river and when she told me this I was appalled and disgusted and couldn't believe that that was a thing. I had so many questions. Why are there straight pipes? Why is that allowed? Is it allowed? I had so many questions and it just it evolved from there. And then how did you figure out to do the science project? So with all my questions it led to mom kind of getting annoyed almost with me constantly at her, why can't I swim in the river? What's wrong with this? Why are people pooping in my water? And, and it involved, it, um, she got involved with Blue Nose Coastal Action Foundation and they led us to Dr. David Maxwell. He actually lives down the road. He's a retired medical doctor who had been testing for years prior to me. And after we got together, we talked and thought that this would be a great, good grade six science fair project. So now you take the science project and the science project gets presumably graded and people think well of it and so forth, but you're not going to stop there, right? No. <laughs> you, what, you know, the next step is you put up a sign, is that? Yeah, so the there? next step after we did the testing, we got our results back, and the results were really bad. They were disgusting. We were really shocked. I was shocked. I didn't, couldn't believe that this was what was happening in my river. Um, after, I wanted a Facebook page, but I was 11, so mom said no. So we compromised and put a big sign on our wharf that said this river is contaminated with fecal bacteria. And after we realized that this could be something bigger than just a project, mom decided that we could have a Facebook page, but we run it together. So the first time we actually did testing, it didn't work. Um, our control was contaminated, so we had to go back and do it again. So after our second time, our control was clear so we could use our results. And at 70, you shouldn't swim, and 170, the water shouldn't even be in contact with your skin. In front of my house was about 250. Wow. Yeah, and uh, our town Bridgewater was way higher than that. The levels were just really terrible. Well, there was one of them that was up over 3,000, wasn't it? <laughs> that would be Bridgewater, yeah. And Bridgewater, yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's presumably toxic to practically even look at. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not good, and that's where people, people put their boats in the water. We have movies there over the summer outside, and it's just kids are always there playing, and just to know that the water is so gross, it's, it's kind of scary. So then we have a million dollar donor comes out of, we don't know where exactly, and has a million dollars to spend on helping to clean up the river. How did that work and do we have any idea who it was? Um, we have no idea who it was and it's to help cover the loans. So whoever it was, we're, it's greatly appreciated and it's a huge, huge amount of money for our community. But So that's one million, but there's still 14.7 and where does that come from? Uh, the $15.7 million was from the Build Canada Fund, so it's a fund of money it, for Canada and our uh, community applied for it and we received it. That's an amazing, that's an amazing result. How, how, what does it, does it cover the whole LaHave watershed or, uh, you know, like how far out are the boundaries of where that money is being spent, do you know? Um, it's from Bridgewater to the ocean, from okay. here. Okay, up above, not, there's yeah. no part of it. So there yeah. are 600 pipes to be fixed. Other kids? If, if you were, and you have been talking to other kids, right? You I have been, yes, yeah. quite a bit. What do you do, what do you say to them? What, what's, the, what's your message to other kids? My main message is that kids can make a difference and that your age shouldn't define what you can and cannot do. It doesn't define what you can and cannot do. So, and I like to, I, I kind of preach that all the time. I say it more than once. It just, I really want to show kids that it doesn't have to be water is what they take on. It could be anything else. Um, just that you can be powerful. It doesn't matter what your age is. As I stand here, 
The most striking current news in the fight against climate change is an international movement of kids going on strike from their schools to protest adult inaction. In the US, kids have sparked a national conversation about gun control. And of course, the most important climate suit in the United States right now is the Juliana case. 21 kids suing the American government for its encouragement of fossil fuel use and its knowing failure to address climate change. Tomorrow belongs to the children of today, and they, thank God, are already starting to shape it. If you enjoyed this interview, you might also enjoy our interviews with Rachel Parent, the teenaged anti-GMO activist, and with Alexandra Morton, the amazing citizen scientist fighting for the survival of the wild Pacific salmon. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time. Thank you.